are on reading 19 and the first chat or the chapter we're reading right now is called fear and the last time we ran they were a deer that was killed on the side of the black river highway. and it's kind of cool how he and the raven together it's pretty cool and i'm wondering why this chapter is called fear because it kind of seemed like his life just might all of a sudden be getting better but then again, <laughs> maybe not. I sleep all through the night and long past sunrise. A full belly keeps me drowsy all day long. I should be happy, but I'm haunted by memories. After a hunt, there's always joy in the pack, howling, wrestling, games of chase. And when the celebrating was done, we would all lie down together, paws and tails overlapping. The comforting scent of my pack all around me. Sometimes I would keep myself awake just to hear the sound of them breathing. All is well, mother would murmur to me, we are together. There's more food to eat. I should go back to the deer. The thought of eating alone makes my tail droop clear down to the ground. And when I finally stir myself, the moon is pale is a pale yellow claw on the horizon. And my raven is head under wing in the trees above me. I shake my nose. I shake from nose to tail. I square my shoulders and beat my front paws to the ground to test my strength. I growl as though I'm the lead wolf. There's no one to hear me. No one to share my food. No one to curl up with and rest. The pain of my injuries, the pain of hunger is nothing compared to the pain that stills my wag and holds my growl. Though I hate it, I go to the shore of the Black River one last time. I call out one last goodbye to my lost family. No one will hear me. I can only hear, I can barely hear myself, but I give them one last howl. It's all I have. As I turn to go, a noisemaker rounds the bend. Its fires throw a sweep of light across the far bank. And in that light, just for a moment, I see a flash of amber. My heart skips a beat. It's a wolf. Another noisemaker, another sweep of light, and I can see black ears and a dark face shining with amber eyes. A wolf, a true wolf. I yip, spin like a pup, I call to her. I breathe in smells, searching for the scent of her. The smells of the Black River nearly choke me, but underneath them, yes, a female wolf. I yip again and call her over. She does not answer. But in the flashes of light that fall across her, I can tell that she sees me. She paces the far bank, strong and black and beautiful. She is young like me, a perfect hunting partner. Already I can feel her running shoulder to shoulder beside me. Already I can imagine licking her ears. How can I get her to cross? Food, obviously food. I dash over to yesterday's deer. I sink my teeth into the meatiest leg and tug it free. A sweep of light from a noisemaker swings across the shattered rib bones. I drop the leg in horror. The Black River, it will kill her. I scramble back. The ground is trembling with the approach of the longest of the longest noisemaker I have ever seen. Danger, stay away, I call to her. She lifts her head to howl, but as she does, the long noisemaker makes the death cry of a bull elk. It rings in my ears, drowning out the stranger's, stranger wolf's voice. The rumble of it makes the little stones on the shore pop. The whoosh of air pushes me back a step. And when my ears stop echoing and my ear, eyes clear from the dazzle of light, Black Wolf is still there, pacing the far shore. Do not cross, I howl. Already another noisemaker is on the way. She runs up the bank and then turns just in time. Stay back, I called her. 
Even as I say it, I'm st- stabbed with regret. I want her company here on the far shore, where nothing but strange ground lies before me. She does not back away from the noisemaker, and I love her courage, even as I am filled with the horror of what might happen if she tries to cross. She calls to me, but her voice is drowned out. She tries again with a running start. I cannot bear to watch, but I cannot turn away. At the last minute, she shies away from the approaching noisemaker. I gasp with relief, but no sooner does the thing pass than she tries again. She is stubborn, more like pounce than warm. How can I persuade her to stay away when she can't hear my warning? Do not die, I whisper. I cannot bear it. Not not after father. Not after warm. I have. Had too much of death. I will not watch another. I lift up my head and howl along. No. My raven hears me. She braves the darkness to fly to my side, and something in her unblinking gaze reminds me of Growl. Growl had a look, a face he made. If we pups were about to stray out of bounds, if we got more than a moment's dash from the safe cover of our den. He would raise the fur on his shoulders and beat the ground with his front paws. He would dip his head low and glare us straight in the eye and make a low, sucking growl. I could not look away from that look. It terrified me. He did not lay a tooth or a paw on us, but we never, never, ever crossed the boundary he set for us. So、that's the end of reading 19. Yikes! I'm excited to see what happens if he meets that wolf that's across the Black River from him, and will she cross? Will she get there safely? And and will they get along? Hmm. Lots of questions. So go to your Google Doc and fill out your amazing summary along with your questions, predictions, feelings, and thoughts.